Of all the different mechanics added into Yu-Gi-Oh over the years, I really feel like Geminis have had one of the most difficult times actually being successful in tournaments. Certainly over the years, there have been some good Gemini monsters. Gigaplant has been good in plant decks, Ill Blood was a good zombie monster, and there are a couple 1900 attack Geminis that have seen play in decks like Hero Beat back in the day. But overall, Gemini monsters are not very good. There are plenty of them that have never ever seen play and probably never will. It's pretty difficult balancing these monsters that in a lot of cases are just vanilla monsters because you always need extra cards to make them work. Now Konami has given us cards like Supervise that help out a lot, but it's actually pretty hard to make a deck that has a lot of Gemini monsters because if you draw a hand of all Geminis, you basically have a useless opening. The problem with the vast majority majority of Gemini monsters outside of cards like Gigaplant and Illblood is that even when you do manage to Gemini summon them, their effects are worse in most cases than regular effect monsters. Now obviously a lot of the Gemini monsters are pretty old at this point, so it's easy to say they're bad in modern Yu-Gi-Oh, but even in their own time period, even when they were released, the payoff really was not there. There was no reason to go through all of the trouble to Gemini summon them when you could just play cards that already had decent effects. I say all this because today's video is all about why nobody remembers Chemicritters. This in the TCG was the second to last push for Gemini summoning. We had in Toon Chaos some cards that were released in an OCG structure deck, and that was the most recent push for Gemini summoning. But before that, we had back in 2016 a whole bunch of Chemicritter cards. Now this is why nobody remembers, so please make sure to write in the comments Comment section below the last time that you thought about the Chema Critter cards, or if you've never heard about them at all, make sure to let me know that as well. And this one has been really tough for me to make, by the way, because I really love the idea and the design of Chema Critters. I think it's a really cool sort of concept, but in reality, as we'll see, at the end of the day, they are still Gemini monsters, and that does come with a lot of problems. But in today's video, we're going to go through all of the Chemicritter support and kind of talk about why they weren't quite good enough to save the Gemini type. Now with the other episodes in the series, I usually go over the monsters and then the spells and traps, but I think it's very important when we're talking about the monsters that you see their field spells. So Catalyst Field is one of the best Gemini support cards I've ever seen. Even in non Chemicritter decks, you want to play this card. This is very good card design and it really goes to show how far Konami was willing to go with pushing the Gemini type. So Catalyst Field says, each turn one level five or higher Gemini monster you normal summon can be summoned again without tributing. During your main phase, you can normal summon one Gemini monster in addition to your normal summon or set. You can only gain this effect once per turn. Once per turn, you can target one card your opponent controls, banish one Gemini monster you control that is treated as an effect monster and has gained its effects until your opponent's end phase, and if you do, destroy that card. Now I don't want to get your hopes up too much because this really is the best card in the entire archetype, and it's also generically good in any deck playing Gemini monsters. I know you might be thinking that Chemicritter is not in the name here, and that is true, but the artwork does feature several Chemicritter monsters and no other Geminis, and it was released in the same set as the rest of the Chemicritters. It's not quite enough to make up for the pitfalls of Gemini monsters as we'll see throughout the video. What this card does do though is it really does help you out in many different ways. By giving you a way to normal summon a level 5 or higher Gemini monster without tributing, that really does help you put some of the better Gemini monsters on the board without having to lose a lot of card advantage, and that extra normal summon effect is great as well because you can use it to Gemini summon a monster you just normal summoned, or you can use it to get more field presence by normal summoning another Gemini from your hand. That last effect is kind of iffy, especially compared to the other good cards released in 2016, but it is a form of removal. It's not like the worst effect ever. I don't really think it needed to banish the card until your opponent's end phase. I think very realistically, it could have put it back on your field during that end phase. That would have been pretty cool. Or perhaps they could have just let you banish a Gemini monster in your graveyard to pop a card. That would have been a lot better as well. But overall, I think Catalyst 
Beast Field is a great piece of legacy support for any Gemini deck. The problem here though is what's always been an issue for Gemini monsters. By themselves, they don't really do that much. You need supporting cards to make them usable. So if you don't draw your Catalyst Field or your Supervise or maybe even your Double Summon if you really want to go crazy, your cards basically do nothing. And that's not really good, especially for a longer tournament. You don't want to play a deck where if you draw five monsters or four monsters, you can't really do anything with them if you don't have these supporting cards. And these supporting cards, by the way, are pretty easy to take out. Your opponent can use spell and trap removal. They can use negation effects. They can bounce them back to your hand. There are a lot of ways to interrupt your catalyst field or supervise. And if they do that, well, now you're in a pretty bad spot. Whereas with other decks, maybe you have extenders to put more cards on the field and get your effects going. As we go through these monsters here, please always be remembering the effects of Catalyst Field. Anytime we're looking at these cards, you have to remember that you can normal summon them and then instantly Gemini summon them if you have that Catalyst Field on the board. So for example, we have three level twos. First up, we have Chemicritter Carbo Crab, a hilarious name and also an awesome artwork. This is a level two Fire Aqua Gemini with 700 attack and 1400 defense. Now I'll read through the Gemini text just in case you guys don't know how it works. This card is treated as a normal monster while face up on the field or in the graveyard. While this card is a normal monster on the field, you can normal summon it to have it become an effect monster with this effect. I don't plan on reading that for every single one of these cards because it is always the same, but there you go just in case you missed that while we were looking at Gemini monsters earlier in the video. So this thing says during your main phase, you can send one Gemini monster from your deck to the graveyard, then add one Gemini monster from your deck to your hand. You can only use this effect of Chemicritter Carbo Crab once per turn. This effect is great, and I really mean that other than the fact that it's stuck on a Gemini monster, but the effect itself once you actually can Gemini summon this card is pretty good. The second level 2 Chemicritter is Chemicritter Oxy Ox, and this is a very important staple 3 of in every single Chemicritter deck. This is really what makes it work in a lot of ways. So when this card is an effect monster, it says during your main phase you can special summon one Gemini monster from your hand, and if you do, all Gemini monsters you currently control become that monster's original original level until the end of this turn. You can only use this effect of Chemicritter Oxy Ox once per turn. So how this deck is supposed to work is that you have a couple level 8 monsters that you special summon with Oxy Ox and then you overlay them for their rank 8. So this is really what makes the entire deck function. And then finally we have Chemicritter Hydron Hawk. This one is not nearly as impressive but it's alright I suppose. You can discard one card then target one Gemini monster in your graveyard special summon it in defense position. You can only use this effect of Chemicritter Hydron Hawk once per turn. Not as exciting as Crab or Ox, but it's all right and I suppose you might play one or two copies, but honestly if you didn't play this card I wouldn't be super surprised. It would be a lot better if it special summoned the monster from the deck. That would be really cool, but special summoning from the graveyard only works if you already have a graveyard set up, and in a deck like this sometimes the difficult part is actually actually getting set up, so you don't really need a recovery card like this, you're just hoping that you actually make a play on turn 1, and this card isn't really that good until you've already comboed off. The two level 8 monsters aren't as impressive, you do need to play at least a couple copies of them to make your Oxy Ox work, but we have Polychemicritter Diox Ogre and Polychemicritter Hydragon. These cards are pretty interesting because when they're Gemini summoned they have two effects, not just one but as you'll see here, their effects are not that great. So Diox Ogre is definitely the better of the two. It says the normal summon of a Gemini monster cannot be negated, so that's pretty good, and once per turn you can banish one Gemini monster from your graveyard, then target one card your opponent controls, destroy it. So that effect is probably the best of all four of these cards combined abilities. Hydragon is pretty useless honestly. It says when another Gemini monster is normal summoned, you can make 
make that monster gain 500 attack and defense, and if a Gemini monster or monsters you control would be destroyed by a card effect, you can destroy one other card you control instead. This card would be a lot better if it just always protected a Gemini monster from being destroyed like the first time of every single turn, that would be kind of cool, and maybe it would be better if it increased the attack and defense by 1000, but in reality, as you can probably tell, Ogre is the better of the two. The big payoff for this deck is their rank 8 boss monster, Methodraco, a beast warrior fire monster with 3000 attack and defense. This is really what you are trying to summon, this is what the entire deck is trying to do. Let's take a look at how good or bad it really is. It takes two level 8 Gemini monsters, which actually is pretty tough because it means you can't just splash this deck into other decks that have level 8s. It would have been a lot better if this card took one level 8 Gemini monster and any other level 8 monster. That would have made the archetype a lot more splashable, but let's take a look at what it says. When this card is a C summoned, you can target one Gemini monster in your graveyard. Special summon it. While this card has exceeds material, monsters your opponent controls cannot target Gemini monsters you control for attacks. Also, your opponent cannot target Gemini monsters you control with card effects. When a Gemini monster is normal summoned, you can detach one exceeds material from this card, make your opponent send one card from their hand or field to the graveyard their choice. So, as you can see here, one of the issues with the Chemicritter deck is the boss monster could use some work. It's not a terrible card, it certainly does have its uses, but the effects are kind of awkward. This is especially terrible when compared to Erebus from the Monarch Structure deck, which was released in 2016, way earlier than any of these cards, because that one lets you choose and it shuffles the card, and that one's a lot easier to summon in many cases than this. So even if I don't think this card should shuffle the card back, because that'd be really, really strong, at the very least, you should be allowed to choose. The the idea here though is that it's not a once per turn effect, which means in theory if you are able to normal summon multiple Geminis while having this card on the field already, you could take out a lot of your opponent's cards. This is made easier with the field spell, but the problem is that to summon this card you pretty much have to use the field spell already, so actually getting this card to the board and then also normal summoning extra monsters is pretty tough. Yes, you can special summon a Gemini from your graveyard and then I suppose you could normal summon that if you had a normal summon left over but in many cases you will not have any extra normal summons by the time you summon this card. It's not the worst boss monster I've ever seen but it really goes to show that a deck that already has inherent issues because they are Gemini monsters really would need a crazy powerful boss monster to end on. Finally we have Burnout, a normal trap card and I really did save the worst card for last year this card is pretty bad. So it is a normal trap that says banish one face up Chemicritter monster you control, special summon two Chemicritter monsters from your deck with different names from each other. That part is pretty good, or at least it would be if it was on a spell. On a trap though, that effect is pretty darn slow. When your opponent declares a direct attack, except the turn this card was sent to the graveyard, you can banish this card from your graveyard, then target one of your banished Gemini monsters, special summon it, and if you do it becomes an effect monster and gains its effects. You can only activate one burnout per turn. This card is pretty bad, I think most people can see that, especially because it does not even negate that direct attack, so your opponent can just run over the monster that you special summon. This has led some players to try playing Blazewing Butterfly and Burnout in their Chemicritter decks, and while I understand the small combo that those two cards have together, I think the better way to play the deck is just to not play those cards at all. Burnout is unfortunately a very bad card to round out an otherwise not too bad archetype. The thing about the Chemicritters is that they're not terrible by any means, they're actually better than a lot of the other archetypes we have talked about in this series, but because they are Gemini monsters, these cards were not quite powerful enough to offset that huge downside. If you have not left a comment already, please make sure to let me know the last time that you thought about Kema Critters, or let me know if you've never heard about them. I'll see you guys later. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Goodbye.